Welcome to the AFOQT Arithmetic Reasoning Review for the Math Final Practice Test number 3, as provided by asoptutoring.com. The AFOQT Arithmetic Reasoning Math Final Practice Test covers a whole range of mathematical information and knowledge that you will need to know before going into the AFOQT Arithmetic Reasoning Test. As always, I would recommend picking up a pencil and paper or a pen if you prefer to come along with me and try and do the problems yourself before you watch me do them and as always you can always download the afoqt tutoring app from the app store or google play store for full final practice tests and many more like it that we will cover here as not all problems and not all types of problems will be can be reasonably covered in the video and you can also sign up at asoptutoring.com for your own personal one-on-one -on -one tutor for the afoqt so you have the highest chance of passing. Okay, moving on. In this video, we're going to have a quick rundown of the topics that we're going to cover. So we have the Pythagoras theorem, probability, word problems in arithmetic operations, equations with exponents, areas, proportions, speed, distance, and time, as well as temperature conversion and number sequence. Let's take a look at the first problem. In the figure below, the area of square ABC is 25, and that of triangle CDG is an isosceles right triangle, with the length of the hypotenuse CD equal to 3 multiplied by the square root of 2. What is the area of the rectangle DEFG? Now, of course, I'll let you give a try first before I take a crack at it. Okay, I'm assuming you've already given it a try. So let's solve this together. So we have the side CF, right? The side CF is the square root of 25. And that gives us 5. Right. Now we can say that CG, that CG equals to GD equals to A. Small small A, by the way, not, not large A. So if we have A squared plus A squared, we've got three multiplied by square root the square root of two, and the entire thing is squared. Okay. Now this transforms into 2a squared, which equals to 9 times 2. And this transforms into a squared, which equals to 9, which gives us the final answer for a, at least for a, as 3. So now that we have a equals 3, we have the side cg which equals gd which equals 3. okay so now that we know cg and gd equal to 3 we have gf equal to 2 and ef equal to 3. so the area of the rectangle de so we can do area of the rectangle de fg is 2 times 3 which gives us six. Okay, sounds good. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, we've got problem two. Bob rolls a pair of dice. What is the probability that he will roll a sum of both numbers equal to eight on his first try? Well, let's take a look. We can create a sample space to try and figure this out. So quickly creating a sample, some sample space, <laughs> very quickly actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, because it's a six-sided dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. So eh, I should probably do that. I will draw this in a different color. Okay, there you go. So let's do this color. And then this, and this, whoops, and this, and this. Then we do this, this, 
this, this, this. So now that we have this little uh, sample space, you know, we have to make sure uh, we have to fill it out like so. Uh, there are five outcomes where the combination is, you know, um, eight. So the first six and one, obviously, oh, whoops, I should probably add this too. Six and one doesn't have anything. Six and two, yes, eight. And then we have five and three, which is an eight. Four and four, obviously an eight. Five and three, an eight again. And a six and a two, which is an eight once more. So if there are five outcomes, oops, let me change the color of that. So there are five outcomes where the sum of numbers is two. Five outcomes, then the total number of possible outcomes is 36. Five outcomes goes to 36 total outcomes. So the probability P of eight is Five outcomes out of 36 possible outcomes is 5 over 36. And we cannot simplify this fraction, so that's our final answer. That is our probability. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay, so we have two-thirds of 36 are equal to three-fifths of which of the following? Well, let's figure this out. This was taken from a multiple choice problem, but unfortunately we are not at the liberty to have these multiple choices. So we have to work our way, we have to work it out the hard way. So let's do this real quick. Yeah, to get two, so we find, we're trying to find two third of 36, which is the same as three fifth of an unknown number, which we will dub x. Two times 12 equals two, three X over five, just to balance out the sides. And we have three X equals five times 24. Uh, I should write, uh, yes, three X equals five times 24. Yes, so that you don't get confused by the curly X and the actual multiplication. Now we have x equals to 5 times 24 divided by 3, which goes to 5 times 8, which equals to 40. So 2 thirds of 36 are equal to 3 fifths of 40. Okay, problem 4. If 2x equals 16, then 3 to the power of x equals... For this problem, this is actually formatted a little bit incorrectly. It should be 2 to the power of x. Should be two to the power of x. Now then, if two to the power of x is 16, then three to the power of x is what? Well, this it should be easy enough to solve. First we get two to the power of x equals 16. No, oh, two to the power of what equals 16? No, oh, two to the power of four equals 16, because if we do two times two times two times two times two, we figure out that it's actually, we have to do it four times to get 16. If x is four, then three to the power of four equals two, no what? Three multiplied by Oops, three multiplied by three, multiplied by three, multiplied by three, which gives us 81. Okay, wonderful. Let's move on to the next problem. The blue region of the design shown is to be painted. What is the area of the blue region inside the rectangle? And it tells us that pi can be taken as 3.14. Well, first we have to figure out the area of the rectangle. Let's see, the area of the rectangle. Area of rectangle equals to 20 times 10, which equals to 200 square feet, uh, square unit really, because we don't know. So unit squared, 200 unit squared or square unit. So the area of one circle We have 
which equals a, which equals pi, times by r squared, which we have 3.14 that we are already given the value. We don't have to use the actual pi value. Multiply by 5 squared. Then we get 78.5 units squared. Okay, so now we can figure out the shaded area. Which equals to 200 minus 2 times 78.5. can just parentheses that for ease of use. Now we have 43 unit squared. Or if you would rather prefer, as, as I mentioned before, you can have 33, 43 square units. And that is our final answer. Okay, moving on to the next problem. A pipe 120 inches long is divided into three sections. If the ratio of the three sections is three to five to two, what are the lengths of each section? I'll let you try that out first yourself. All right, I'm assuming you tried it out. I'm coming back into it. Okay, so we just need to add the ratios first. Three plus five plus two, which equals 10. One ratio is 120 over 10, which equals 12. Because this is 120 inches divided by the whole, just a 12. So we have each section as follows as 36, uh, 12 times three is obviously 36 inches. 12 times five equals to 60 inches. And 12 times two, which equals to 24 inches. I should write that inches better. There you go. And those are our final answers. All right, moving on to the next one. Problem seven. What is the area of a triangle with a base of eight feet and a height of four feet? Well, that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. We've got 12 times B times H. So why do we have 12 here? Well, 12 is just eight plus four. So anyways, which equals to 12 times 8 times 4, which equals to 16. 16 feet squared. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now we have problem 8. Two trucks leave a factory at the same time. One travels east at 60 miles per hour and the other truck travels west at 30 miles per hour. And how many hours will they be 150 miles apart? Well, we have the distance equals RT equation, which is distance equals rate and time. Uh, so if we have the time as X, you know, we can say 60X plus 30X equals 150. So we have time equal to x. So we have 90x equal to 150. So we have x equal to 150 over 90, which equals to 15 over 9, which equals to 5 over 3, which equals to one and two thirds hours. One and two thirds hours, that is our time. That's how long it will take for them to be 150 miles apart. All right, problem nine. A 120 inch long board is divided into two sections. If the ratio of the two sections is three to five, what are the lengths of the sections? Okay, well, we have the addition of ratio, which is, 3 plus 5 equals to 8. We have the per unit ratio, which is 120 inch board divided by 8, which equals 15. And then the each individual, the two sections are 3 times 15, which equals to 45 inches. And 5 times 15, which equals 2. That looks like a 6. Times 15, which equals to 75 
inches. And those are our answers. Okay, so we on to the next question. Problem 10. A teacher reviews four and a half papers per hour. How many papers will the teacher review, <laughs> review, not e-view, in six and one thirds hours? Well, we can just multiply straight across here. Four and a half multiplied by six and one third, which gives us about nine, nine over two, just to simplify it out, multiplied by 19 over three, because we're bringing out the mixed into improper fractions. Then we have 50, 57 over two, and then we have 28 and one half papers. But really, you should probably answer with, you know, I mean, it's all giving us the papers and in fractions. I think it's fine to answer in fractions. But of course, if you want to do it in proper numbers, you can't really grade a half a paper, probably reasonably be 28 papers. Okay. Problem 11. If the following series was continued in the same pattern, what are the next two numbers in the series? So we've got 1, 10, 7, and 16. Well, the rule here is 1 plus 6 equals 7. So we have 10 plus 6 equals 16. So the next two terms are obviously 7 plus 6 equals 13. And 16 plus 6 equals 22. Well, there you are. Okay. Just highlight that out for your own convenience. All right. Here we go to problem 12. A carpenter cut three four feet by six inch shelves from a 14 feet board. How much of a piece was left over? Well, we've got three multiplied by four feet, six inches. Okay, so that's, if we can just, you know, carry it over. So it'll be 12 feet and 18 inches. Which is, you know, if we actually take out the inches into feet, it'll be 13 feet and 6 inches. And if we take 14 minus 13 feet and 6 inches, so we have 14 feet here, we actually get 6 inches. So that's how much of the piece was left over. Problem 13. Two automobiles start at the same place and travel along the same route. The first car travels at an average rate, uh, sorry, average speed of 40 miles per hour. Technically still correct, it is still rate. While the second car is going 55 miles per hour. Which expression is correct to calculate the second car's distance? And how many miles further along the route is the second car at the end of the five hours? The distance traveled by the second car isn't too bad. Uh, we can figure that out by doing 55, which is the speed, multiplied by 5 miles. So, you know, the, that's the distance. Second car. Well, we can also do 40 by five to get the distance of the first car, right? So all we need to do reasonably is do 55 times five minus 40 times five to get around 75 miles of a distance. Okay, problem 14. What is the product of the reciprocals of two over three, one over eight, and five? Well, reciprocal means to flip, so all we need to do is flip all three numbers around, around the, around the little uh, fraction. Then we have the product is multiple, so we have eight over one, and then we have one over five. So all that together comes to around 12 over five, which you can simplify into a mixed fraction of two over two fifths. And that is our answer. Okay. Problem 15. When the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, what is it on the Fahrenheit scale? 
we can use the formula f equals 9 over 5 times c plus 32. Well, let's figure it out. So the Fahrenheit would be 9 over 5 times by 20, which is the Celsius, plus 32. So that would be 36 plus 32, which comes to 68 degrees Celsius. Wait, no, that would be 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Huh. Okay.